So it's Granby, Colorado, and the year is 2004, and the city isn't making a lot of profit. So like any other city, decides to build a source of revenue, in particular, a concrete factory. Everyone is excited and happy that there is going to be a source of income in the town, but there's a problem. The building of the factory will block the main access road to a muffler shop owned by a man by the name of Marvin Hemeyer. He approaches this issue, of course, at first by simply petitioning the creation of the new industry and even asking to build a new road to the business, which he bought machinery to do himself. The city denies this proposition, and it only gets worse from there. During the building of the industry, they cut off the sewage line to Marvin's business, and with the city deciding to eventually fine him for it. And with no way to pay his bills, he had to give up his land and sell his company. He was told that he had six months to evacuate the property. With Hema Meyer's life in shambles, the only thing he did have was a Komatsu D-335A bulldozer he was planning to use to build a new road for his business. But since he had to sell his company, he had to make a new plan for it. So he began to modify the dozer for a year and a half, first adding composite armor, which included steel sheets covering the cab motor and general parts of the machine, and under that laid a thick layer of concrete for extra protection. In the cab, he then set up multiple monitors hooked up to the front and rear cameras. Multiple gun ports were also put in and around the central control center. A stockpile of food was put in as well as an air tank to help provide air circulation. He mired documenting this process by recording audio tapes and notes, his main motive being Quote unquote, because of your anger, because of your malice, because of your hate, you would not work with me. I'm going to sacrifice my life, my miserable future that you gave me to show you that what you did was wrong. People passed by his place every day, but none of them knew what was really going on. He felt that a higher power was clouding his vision, and on one occasion wrote, I was always willing to be reasonable until I had to be unreasonable. Sometimes reasonable men must do unreasonable things. It was not only the town that caused Marvin to be unreasonable. His father passed away in March of 04, and in the same month cut off his engagement when he found his wife with another man. So the day came, Friday, June 4th. It was a really dark and rainy day, but just like any other weekday, the people of Granby headed to work. Hemeyer, on the other hand, got up to mail his audio tapes to his brother and then decided to go to his shop with a list of handwritten targets. He used winch controls to lower the concrete steel shell on top of the vehicle, now he was ready. Just at 3 p.m., the tank tore through the side of the shed and smashed into the concrete factory. Shortly afterward, the people of the town called 911. Meanwhile, the killdozer was going on a rampage. A nearby civilian saw this in progress and decided to hop into a front-end loader and intercept the tank head-on. The civilian jumped out and withdrew when he was fired upon from one of the gun ports in the machine with the factory in shambles. Marvin then moved the dozer onto the highway that goes to the downtown of Granby. The emergency services caught up with him and then they tried to surround the monstrosity of a machine but were met with pure force with the outcome ending with a couple crushed police vehicles. An officer by the name Glenn Taylor even tried during this pursuit to jump on top of the dozer and shoot his way in, but it was no use. The first line of defense was a complete failure. The second line was stationed right behind in town. They tried bullets and explosives, but none of it seemed to slow down the tank. Instead, they had to figure out a different plan to evacuate anyone in the path of the behemoth, including any nearby residents. This made it easier for him to hit his targets like the mayor's former home, the office of a newspaper that cited against him in an editorial, the business of a former member of city council, and the city hall. Luckily, in all this destruction, no one was hurt or killed. Now that the city of Granby had evacuated all of its residents, they had to come up with a plan which the first one was to acquire a scraper that was equivalent to the weight of a killdozer, but when they pitted them against each other, the scraper lost. The next was to slowly wear down the vehicle before Marvin hit his next target. The killdozer was slowly wearing down, and the next place he had on his list was Gamble's Hardware. And while he was trying to take it down, the radiator broke, then the engine gave out. This weight caused the floor to break and the tank to get stuck. Marvin was screwed with multiple SWAT teams surrounding. The mechanic had a decision to make to go to prison or kill himself. And, well, he shot himself. After two hours and seven minutes, and about seven million in damage, the rampage was over. The tank was torched, blown up, and ripped by a crane to try to get to the cubby where they found his body with bullets in it from a 357 handgun. 
the tank was later completely dismantled to be forgotten about. See, I don't think Himai was that bad of a guy, but a man that was driven to do irrational things. I mean, it is messed up to plow over an entire town. I feel like we have thoughts of sticking it to the man too, but we don't act on it. For my thoughts, neither the town or the man behind the machine were right.